Okay, folks, thanks everyone for waiting. Um, first of all, welcome to today's webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're, you are located. And um, before I hand you over to our presenter today, Denise Skill, I just have a couple of housekeeping uh, items to go through. Um, we are recording today's session. So if, uh, if a colleague or if you need to leave early or if you know someone that couldn't attend today, don't worry, it is being recorded and the recording will be available within 24 hours. Um, secondly, we do have a lot of folks on today, so everyone's line is muted. If you do have any questions, we do have time dedicated at the end for Q&A, so please use the questions pane within GoToWebinar um, throughout, so don't wait till the end. So if you have any questions uh, about any of the content that Denise goes through, please post the questions in the questions pane, and uh, Denise and the rest of the team will get to them at the end. So that's it for me. Um, I'll now hand you over to Denise to take you through the content and uh, I hope everyone enjoys it. So yeah, over to you, Denise, if you want to unmute your line, please. Perfect, thanks, David. Um, welcome everybody to our little slideshow today. What I'm gonna walk you through is how to build the ultimate score buddy scorecard. So I do understand that a lot of you that are on the line may already be very familiar with ScoreBuddy and the scorecards and how to build them. But we also do have a few new customers on here as well that may not be completely familiar. And the whole reason for today is to essentially just show you all the different elements that you can incorporate into your scorecard even if you have been using it for the past two years, there may be one or two particular features that you weren't fully aware of that maybe you didn't know you could add in. And every single part of the scorecard is able to be reported on as well. So my colleague Harry will be running another webinar, I think it's on the 7th of April, and it will go over all the reporting elements and uh, analytic elements as well. So everything that is added into your scorecard, you are able to report on it. And across all industries, things are very, very different. So the whole basis of today is to show you how to either simplify your scorecards, or to essentially make them um, advanced. You know, there may be certain processes that you are changing in, you know, the next couple of weeks. You're always able to go back and you're always able to amend your scorecards at any time. There may be certain things that worked six months ago that may not work now, or there may be different things that you would like to report on as well that you know you currently don't have in your particular scorecards. So our agenda today is to show you the different types of scorecards that we have. Now compared to some of our competitors, we do have the most flexible scorecards. Um, you are able to customize them as you see fit based on the different types of industry you're in, based on the different types of processes that you have in place. Best practices are there as well, just to see, okay, if, if something wasn't working, are you going to create a brand new scorecard or are you just going to amend it? I'm also gonna walk through how to add questions, how to add weightings, Depending on your on your business and on your company, you can have different questions with different values. Some may be higher values, some may be lower values. Again, it is all just coming down to what you want to see reporting-wise, results-wise over the next six to 12 months. We also are going to cover our non-numeric scorecards. And I will go through then some of the advanced scorecard features that we have in place as well. So currently at the moment within ScoreBuddy, we have three different types of scorecards. Probably the vast majority of our customers at the moment use our standard scorecard. So the standard scorecard gives a percentage value 
a lot of the industries we see are more a results-driven industry that would use the standard scorecard that they want to see um, particular performance results. They also want to determine what sections can be weighted higher than others. The success rate scorecard is a compliance heavy scorecard. So this particular scorecard, you are not able to weight it. The answer types on this would just have a pass or a fail rate. And these um, scorecards are used for critical outcomes. And then the third scorecard that we offer is a non-numeric scorecard. Um, some particular industries such as charities and maybe um, non-funded industries would use this um, scorecard. It's more focused on how to better staff performance because there's different tiers that you can set up instead so that the agent or the employee does not see a number they see a particular tier which can be set by yourself um, room to improvement so it, it's not a numbers based scorecard and these scorecards are interchangeable as well if you have started off with a standard scorecard that you like you can then change it to a non-numeric at a later stage. So you are able to switch in between standard and non-numeric. The success rate scorecard, you can't interchange, but you can have a standard scorecard with compliance questions in there as well. So they would be the three scorecards that we offer. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for two seconds and I'm going to um, jump onto my demo system. So bear with me there two seconds. Now, so I'm here in my own instance. So let me just log in and I'm going to go into the scorecard section here. Okay. Now, before you even start to build, it would be great to sit down with your team and just determine, okay, what do I want to measure? What are we looking to measure in this particular company? What do we feel like we need to improve on? Are there particular elements in our process that we feel that we are missing? How long do I want this scorecard to be? How long do I want evaluators taking um, time to evaluate? And these are the particular questions that will allow you to determine how many different types of elements you have in your scorecard. If you're only given evaluators a set amount of time um, to score, then it probably isn't the best idea to have a um, evaluation card that maybe has 30 questions. And you can have different types of scorecards. If you want one that's just particular to coaching, you can have one then that may be just based on processes here. So in the scorecards tab, you will be able to see all the different types of scorecards and you are able to have universal scorecards as well. So I am just gonna bring this over here and with your new scorecard, you can determine the name, which can be edited at any single time, and then you choose your type. So as we have said, the standard scorecard is what a majority of our customers use within ScoreBuddy. You then have your success rate, which is your pass and fail rate scorecard, or you, your non-numeric. As I've previously said, if you pick a standard or a non-numeric, you can interchange them at a different stage. So I am just gonna choose a standard one for today and I can decide, do I want this scorecard to be available for every group within my organization or do I want this for just one particular group? Depending on the size of your organization, if it is going to be a universal scorecard for maybe coaching or a particular process or 
even an interview, we would recommend to choose all groups. But if you wanted to be more specific, then you would just choose this group here. So I'm just going to choose one that is going to be universal. And I'm going to name it here and add my group. Hmm. All groups, add square card. So automatically you can see now that I am brought to this particular page. So my name is there, my group is there. I can put in a description of this particular scorecard as well, that if I say, you know, this is for a particular department or this should be used between these months or what the scorecard is based on. So this will all show up in the description. Category, I can decide, is it phone, email, complaints, social media, chat, or multi-channel. You are able to create your own categories as well, specific to your business if you need to. But generally, across all organizations, these are some of the elements that um, employees will be evaluated on. Up the top, anytime you're building, if you want to see what a evaluator is seeing while they're um, scoring, you can preview it you're also able to print. And we do have this option here, which is a tip sheet. Now, the tip sheet will only be available to evaluators to see. It's not available to any agent, and we are able to add tips to questions, which I'll show you in a couple of minutes. But the tip sheet would be certain aspects that the evaluator may have to take into consideration when they are scoring, our question details is where we're going to weight our questions. So this is something I'll get to in the next couple of minutes. And please also be aware that you will need to have the scorecard unlocked. Because this is a brand new scorecard, it's automatically unlocked. But if you decide to go back and amend your scorecard at any given time, it will need to be unlocked um, before you can do that. And then the more options are, what do we want to add in to this particular scorecard? And there is a lot of different options here, as well as our scorecard advanced settings. Okay. Now, again, as I said, as a business whole, you will have to decide on you know, how long you want the scorecard to be and all these different particular elements. For today, I'm just going to do five questions. Okay, now it does auto save, so you can see it here auto saving. And I will need to write in my question. So, did the agent give the. Okay. Now, every time you move on to a different part, it will tell you that it is saving. Um, And again, depending on the scorecard, some of these may be compliance questions, which we can give them a compliance section. Now, I know some of these are a little bit silly, but it's just to give you a little bit of an insight. Now, if it is the case that you're like, oh, maybe this should be up a little further, you are able to drag questions up and down if needs be, and it will automatically tell you here, you know, um, it will change the question number for you. 
with regards to your answers, if the answers are going to be the same for every single question, you can do a copy with this. So if you click on answers and add your answer choice, so I have yes, I might put in partially, no, and NA. You are able to add in um, up to 17 different answer choices per question if needs be. Now, I've answered those in, but if I want to, I can click copy, and that will automatically auto-populate those answers for every single question. So we have that there. Now, with that, I also have the option to add tips. So at the very top of my scorecard, I can have a tip sheet that the evaluator can look at at the beginning, or I can have tips per each question that the evaluator will see. So if I wanted to add a tip to this particular question, be like, did the agent use the correct tone? And I can save that. And I will be able to save that when I go to my preview section. I also have the option that I can delete the question if needs be, if, it's, if I've added in maybe 10 questions and two of them are very similar, I can delete it out. You will see here now that it's asking me what sections are these. So you are able to divide your scorecard up into individual sections such as greeting, you know, then you could have a troubleshooting section, you can have a compliance section. In order to create your sections, you will need to come up to the more drop down and go to sections. Now, again, depending on your business, um, you can name them whatever you would like. So if I click on add section here, I'm going to put it as greeting, but underneath you will see there's a type, default and compliance. With a default question, that question can be weighted, so you are able to put your own particular number on that question if you want that question to be worth five points ten points whichever it doesn't matter as long as it's a default section it can be weighted there is then the compliance section if there is a section in your scorecard that you deem compliance you are not able to weight that particular uh, section the weighting will be zero but the answers will be pass and fail so I'm going to add greeting as default. I'm going to add another section here. So I will just do, um, we'll say promotion as the default. General. And I have it one here, protocol or you can have it as GPR compliant. You can name your section, whatever you like. And I'm gonna change that to compliant and add that in, okay? So these are my four sections that I've added for my scorecard. So I'm gonna go back to edit scorecard. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna put this in as greeting. I'm going to put this in as general, general, promotional, and then I'm going to bring this here to protocol. Okay, so I have my questions done, my sections are done, my answers are in, I can put my tips in. You can have as many tips per question as you wish, it is completely up to yourself. I have seen that most particular organizations usually have maximum four tips per question. Anything else, especially if you are on a time constraint, can be a little bit too much for the evaluator. If I want to preview how my scorecard looks, I click preview. It tells me I'm in preview mode. 
and automatically you can see that it shows now at the very top I have teams supervisors event duration event type event date and time subtype and reference so this is something that we will add in very shortly but we can see here automatically that for question one my tip is appearing here my answers are appearing here as well so from a section perspective i have my greeting i have my general two questions in my general section one in my promotional and then i have my protocol now if you have a look the answer types are very different so i had picked yes partially no and na but for my compliance as i said it's pass fail or na okay so we're gonna go back to edit scorecards and we might decide to add in a few extra bits like an event type okay so again depending on the industry that you're in your event types can be anything that you wish it can be an offer it can be the type of interaction that the agent was dealing with like complaints or things like that so I'm going to add in an event type. Once you start to add them in for this particular scorecard, it will ask you to choose, you know, from existing ones or a new one. So I'm going to put in that this is an offer and the sub event type could be anything. It could be, you know, a referral, a friend offer. I'm going to add in my event type. I could do a new one and it could be, you know, complaint. And the sub event type could be overcharged. Again, this is just to give you ideas of what you can put into your scorecard. And as I said at the very, very beginning, every single thing can be reported on. Your sections of your scorecard can be reported on, the event types can be reported on, as well so everything that you have here you will be able to pull really good data from it and in doing so help to um, change your processes help to change um, you know certain things that you may not have been aware of it will also help you to upskill your staff be it team leads supervisors employees whatever it may be so i have that scorecard in there with regards then my comments so with your comments these are generally canned responses for particular questions if for example you found that you were listening to an evaluation and there was a little bit of background noise and maybe you marked that agent as partially you don't have to type it in it can be a canned response there so you can add comments and you can assign them to particular sections. So I can add a comment in that there was maybe some background noise. Add that in. I can maybe do it for my protocol. We like breach. Add that particular comment in. Again, these are just here to help save a little bit of time with the evaluations that the evaluator isn't writing in long pieces of text that the organization can decide, okay, um, these are particular things that we need to have in there. And as I said, all of these can be reported on as well. So I have two comments there that I've added in. And the next part that I have is my causes so what your causes are there for they are for you to find the root cause of the issue if an agent fails something completely such as you know maybe not turning off the recording when they're asking for card details and things like that what is that from is it from a training gap is it lack of knowledge of processes things like that so if I decide to add a cause in, I'm going to add it into protocol. And you can choose 
causes to be specific for specific questions. So you'll just say that the cause of them not asking the correct, um, <clears throat> excuse me, not asking the correct question was maybe you could put in a training gap. And you can have as many causes as you wish. They can be separated by a comma. And I can add my cause in. You can have causes for every single question if, if you want. And again, they can be decided on by um, the business what they are. And they can be made mandatory as well if you want causes to be something that's mandatory in your um scorecard if you click here okay this is the question detail so you can either click it there or in the edit scorecard option you can go to question details it's up to yourself so that's how we got to this particular part here so with the question details as you can see I have my weighting here, my answer value. If you hover on any of these, if you're a little bit unsure, it will give you a little bit of a description of you know, the answer value, what it is, how it can be assigned, the maximum score. We also have a fail section, fail all, NA, and we have our causes here. I can decide, for my greeting section, it's only one question. I might say, okay, I want this question to be weighted at five. And if they answer correctly, it's one. Essentially what it is, is this weight is multiplied by this. So the max score is five. If it's partial, they you know, didn't give the correct greeting. If I mark them at this, they'll get two and a half points instead five by zero is zero. If a question, if the NA, um, for example, NA is not going to be anything to do with this. So we can either decide to put that at a one or leave it at a zero. NA is not applicable in this question at all. So we don't really base it off these particular three answers because the agent would have to give a greeting. If it is the case that they didn't give the greeting, you have the option for them to fail the greeting section if they answer no. So that means that those five points are completely wiped out of the scorecard. They don't get the five points. So if the agent doesn't give the correct greeting, they get zero points, but they fail this section. Okay. For general, we might say, we might give this particular question a seven, worth seven points. For partial, we'll do a 0.5. For this, we'll do seven as well. And this is 0.5. Now, it could be that this um, particular question might be something that you want them to fail the section on or you want it to fail all. So that would be your compliance, pardon me. So down the bottom, you have your compliance that if they fail it, they could fail the entire scorecard. So that would be your fail all right here. So what that would mean is that the agent would fail the entire scorecard. And there is an option in the advanced settings that we can either have the scorecard go entirely to zero, or we can have it that they are, you know, they get everything else right, but in the reporting it shows that they have a critical fail. So I'm gonna put this one as a 10. So I have my weightings here. If we go down to the bottom, we can see that this evaluation card is worth 29 points. I might just give this an 11 just to bring it to an even 30. 
and down the bottom is where I put my target. So it is a standard scorecard. So I have to decide what the target for my scorecard would be, that my agents will pass it or fail it. So my target I'm setting is at 80%. Okay, so in my greeting section, it's worth five points, five by one is five. If they don't give the correct greeting, they fail the greeting section. Okay, then here I can decide, you know, they can fail the section based on this question. So if they answer this wrong, they fail the general section. But again, it's all down to yourselves what way you want it. So you don't have to have them fail a section whatsoever. It does give you that option and that flexibility. So that if that's something that you wanted to do and you wanted to become a little bit stricter. Um, on how employees interact in their evaluations, you can do that. The protocol, your compliance question, you can have it there. But also as well, we did put in two causes for this. So we're gonna say that if they fail it, a cause needs to be put in. So I'd have to choose why they fail that question. And again, I'm able to report on that cause. Now the NA that I have there, there's two options with an NA answer that if it's not applicable, this particular interaction wasn't applicable, I can have, if it's not applicable, that the agent can get the full marks if I put a one there, or I can just mark it here as not applicable instead completely up to you but you do have those options there so we have our scorecard now it's built um let me have a look yeah it's built there so all you have to do then is click save scorecard and it will save now if i do need to go back and amend it it's still unlocked in there but it may be the case that you may have to leave and come back so you can still leave it unlocked. But there is one more additional part that you can add to your scorecard, and that is your custom fields. So with the custom fields, again, this is industry and business um, dependent on what you would like to see. Um, it just gives an extra layer of customization to the scorecard. So if I think add custom fields, maybe I want to know where my customers are coming from. I might want their location. So I can say location and I can either have it as a data tag or I can have it as text input. Majority of people use it as the data tag because once they enter them here, then they don't really, you know, it's a little bit less work for the evaluators. So you can see there is some examples here that blog, email, letter. I'm just gonna do, you know, location, so north, south, east and west. And you can have it that these are required to be filled in. Um, an evaluation can't be fully done if this isn't filled in. So I'm gonna have it that the location needs to be filled in, add a custom field. You can have as many custom fields as you wish um, in, your, um, in your scorecard. Again, it just depends on what type of information you want to report on in your scorecard. So coming back to here, if I go back to scorecards now, I can see I have the name of my scorecard, its type, the group it is assigned to, the category. You can put in location as well, um, especially if you have a global matrix organization. You know, this scorecard may just be for like America and another one could be for UK. It's completely up to yourself. If I click edit and go in, I have the name of it, the description, number of questions, my category. I have a quick look over. If I want to add in another additional question, I can. 
and with regards all my question details I can see I have all the weightings in there I have the option whether they are a fail all a fail section or an NA I have my mandatory causes in there as well but maybe there is a few other additional pieces that I want to add in in the more option you also have your scorecard settings and this is individualized it's per scorecard so um not every scorecard has to be the same that you can create it can have different settings as well if you want the event reference to be mandatory switch that on the event types to be mandatory once these things are switched to mandatory you cannot finish scoring without them you can enable blind scoring so some businesses do use this and um, that it basically hides the score column so that evaluators aren't swayed by the amount of points that can be given per answer and um, so it doesn't affect their answering process essentially now with the fail all results as i said you can have it that my like we see here in this scorecard that it is 80 percent is my pass rate so if i use this particular scorecard to score an agent and they get 85 in my score log 85 percent will be green if they got 75 it would be yellow and um, if they fail my compliance section and they get 70 percent that 70 percent will be red but it'll still be 70 percent but if you want a fail all section to bring to just totally wipe out the score you can switch this on which means that the fail all result will bring the entire scorecard down to zero percent which means it doesn't matter if they've gotten every single thing right bar that one question it will come on as a zero so again it depends on how um how strict you want to be on that is it a chance for a coaching opportunity um, you know do you want employees to see zero percent on their dashboards again this is something that you would have to discuss internally now, your point of failure email notification and your compliance failure email notification generally the supervisor is alerted and so on when results are done or requested and accepted and things like that but if you do have somebody that maybe doesn't use score buddy on a daily basis in your organization but wants to be kept up to date on where people are failing what they're failing on you can switch this on and you can put in their email addresses and um, separated by a comma so that they are aware that there is a fail all there and this will essentially be tied into this that if you have the fail all as a zero higher management can then be like okay why is this happening and um, here you can have your compliance failure that it's just that if they fail that particular question as well so you have those options there you can put in as many email addresses in there as you wish the sales section subtracts so what this means is my scorecard is worth 30 points but my greeting was worth five points so scorebuddy will automatically um, divvy out the percentage based on the points that I've done but if it is the case that I switch this on what's going to happen there is <clears throat> excuse me what's going to happen there is that score buddy will then take those five points out and my result will be based off of 25 points instead of the 30 points custom report label so again this allows you to create custom labels or flags that will show up in evaluation section of reports so you can put those in if you wish few businesses use it few businesses don't um, but again it's completely up to yourself whether or not you want that on this should automatically be on for every single scorecard that once the evaluation is complete the results should automatically populate on said agents dashboards 
okay so um very minute they're scored if you mark that they should be for example um if you mark that I'm trying to say there. Sorry, I've lost my train of thought there. Yeah, so if uh, you want that if the score appears on the agent dashboard, it should automatically go there. Like if the agent is marked and um, that they should be emailed, they will get it into their email as well. But if they're just ignoring their email, it should automatically just come up on their little performance dashboard there. Now, I'll come back to this one in two seconds, but Display for self score. A lot of businesses are now allowing agents to score themselves on certain interactions. Um, so, if this is the particular scorecards that you want agents to be able to score themselves on, you could switch this on. Otherwise, you can create a different type of scorecard for them to score their interactions on. You always want the um, event date and time to auto populate. And then you can also have this here if you want multiple comments. So the question comments that we created, if you didn't just want one, um, you can have multiple. Same with the causes as well. And the question number view. So this will group the scorecard by question number. So if you leave um, this on ticked, it would be just grouped by section. So majority of businesses will just use it by section it's a little bit easier and um, but for example if if you see what i did earlier when i moved one question up and one question down it'll, if if i move question 10 into beside like question two it'll leave it as 10 and two but section wise it's a little bit easier to do that instead just leave it as a section and yes so coming back to Non numeric. So this is a standard scorecard. If I go to it and I lock it, for example, and I go back in, excuse me, you will see that it is locked. I need to unlock it to edit it. If I decided to score an agent with this, it will come up as a percentage value, whatever they, whatever they, um, get as a result. If it is the case that I want it changed and maybe it's a few weeks down the line, I can see that staff are a little bit, you know, down because they're they all may be failing on a particular section and they're getting, you know, below the the target score. You might want to bring up the morale, you might think, okay, I need to coach instead. So you can go and you can change it to where are we going? Non-numeric. Okay. So when you decide to change a standard to non-numeric, it will ask you to configure the thresholds. So if I click here to configure new thresholds, if I say, okay, if they get below, just an example just to do two, you can have as many different thresholds as you wish. So if I say, if they get below, 50. Okay, I can put a label on that instead of saying it was 50. Like I say, it could be better, you know, and I could put it as a light red. If I have a threshold that it's equal to maybe 670, I could say, you know, meets expectations, put it as agreed. And then anything above that. So if I have it's equal to 70 or over, it meets the expectations. Okay, so I have two thresholds there. Again, as I said, if you want it multiple, you can do that. And um, so you have the option to go below, equal to or above a certain number. I would test this out a few times um, just to see in case they start to overlap. It will tell you as well um, if I said like above 81 was um, exceeds, for example. 
and I add a threshold, it will tell me that it could be wrong. Oh, it's actually right. So, yeah. But if there is a overlap in some aspects, it will tell you that you need to change your thresholds in there. So that would be all you have to do. And then you just score normally and the agent will see it. So with regards to scoring then, in a standard score, the agents will be able to see it in their performance dashboard. So for example, if I went and I go to this, with a non-numeric score, Audrey won't be able to see it here because it's threshold, whereas this is to do with percentage. The agent will need to go into scores and she will be then able to, let me just do this here and see, she will be able then to see those particular thresholds. Whereas if it was a standard scorecard, she would see her percentage value here. So just to be aware of that, if agents are saying, oh, I can't see my score as a non-numeric, they need to go to scores here. But with regards to the standard scorecard, it shows up here. Now, let me swap back just to give you a little bit. Let me see, I think Bobby has standard ones. Yeah, so we'll have the standard scorecard will show a percentage as such. And then the same with your success rate scorecard, it will show the pass fail. So it will be red and green columns there. So your standard shows here, your success rate shows here, but your non-numeric, you will need to go into the scores option and you will be able to see the non-numeric ones there. But once you have um, looked over your scorecard, you have previewed it and you lock it, the very minute you lock it, it is then available for scoring um, for whatever group and whatever employees are associated with that group. So that would be everything with regards to the scorecard, how to build it, all the advanced options that you would have. As I said, all the analytics and the reporting, every element that you put into it, you will be able to pull data straight from there. But that's um, a separate webinar that Harry will be running in the next week or so. So I would really, really recommend to actually sit in on that because he'll be able to show you, especially in the scorecard section, where all that data is found so that maybe three or six months down the line after building your scorecard, you'll be able to amend it to um, whatever processes have changed there as well. So I know everybody has been probably sending in a lot of questions. If there are a lot of duplicate questions, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if there are a lot of duplicate questions, the guys I'm sure have rounded them off. But Harry or Adam or Stephen, uh, is there any questions that have popped up there? Hi, Denise. Um, yeah, there, there, there are a few. Um, so I'll call those out. I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, my name's Harry McIntyre. I'm Denise's colleague, uh, and I'll be hosting the um, analytics um, sort of expert uh, webinar uh, in a couple of weeks, um, which I very much would be uh, looking forward to seeing you all at. Um, so the first question um, that we had, Denise, and I think this, I think you actually probably covered this later, was are we able to have an NA uh, a waiting for an NA question that doesn't um, change the value of the rest of the questions. Um, that was by Alba, and I think we've, I think you covered that, uh, didn't you? At, uh, yeah. So on. if, um, yeah. yeah, if there was ten questions, two of them were compliance, and eight of them were default, the per the answer would be based on the eight questions. So yeah, it, it, the compliance would be different. It wouldn't be weighted. Okay. Um, the other one we had was, uh, I think I might feel this, uh, someone uh, saying that they had added a compliance section, um, however, they weren't able to then delete it. Um, they're getting a message uh, saying that this um, section is assigned already to a question. 
uh, that you're unable to delete it. And they're asking, is this a, sim, uh, a system limitation or would you be able to advise how I can delete it? Um, so yeah. look, I'll just uh, field that one and say, um, no, it isn't possible to um, delete a section. Um, the error message um, does, does uh, throw a good few uh, people off. It's what it really means when it says assigned to a question is that it has previously been used to create a result. Um, the error message could probably be a little bit clearer. Um, so it isn't possible to delete a section um, from that sections page that Denise was showing you. However, you obviously can um, add in new sections at any point and you can unassign any of the questions that you had um, assigned to any section from that so that the section is effectively inactive. Um, you know, it's not going to pay a part of your uh, scores going forward, but it will obviously still exist, uh, which is sort of the system reason that it can't be deleted, is to ensure that it still exists on those results that you have already created. Um, so there's another question we have here. Um, is there an option to notify the agent when a score has been uploaded uh, without having to manually select this when you click save score? No, like, like the thing about it is when you, when you score the agent, um, you can decide whether it goes to them as an email notification. So it would come into their inbox and they would be able to see it or it will appear on their dashboard, but it's not automatic you would have to click. Um, we have uh, not so much a question, but just someone um, popping in that they had to head off a bit early, uh, but this has all been very useful and thank you so much. Uh, so thank you, Denise. Um, the last question we have is, um, can we send fail all notifications based on team or department? At the moment, no. Um, it is something that we have discussed internally, but it, it's not available at the moment, unfortunately. Okay, perfect. And yeah, no, that's uh, all of the all of the questions we had. Okay, perfect. Um, well, everybody, I really appreciate appreciate you taking the time out to um, sit on this webinar. I know it's not easy sitting there for nearly an hour, but we have recorded the whole. Um, the whole webinar there for you. So we will be sending it out to everybody. Um, I do think there may be a, a poll going out afterwards or a survey as well. So if you would be able to even fill that out when it does arrive into your inbox, that would be much appreciated um, as well. And I would definitely say to sign up to Harry's webinar because he's going to go very in depth especially if you really like, um, you feel like you've been missing out on certain reports. Um, there have been additional reports added in over the past while that you may not be aware of. So I would definitely recommend to sign up for that as well. So thank you everybody. And I hope you have a great evening, a great morning, wherever you're um, logging in from as well. So David, are you going to finish up there? You, you, you just did it. <laughs> ah, <sorry. laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much under there at the end. No, that's great. Thanks yeah. very much, Denise. Uh, very detailed. Um, obviously, by all the questions, um, it's been a fantastic session. So as Denise said, we'll get the recording out within the next 24 hours. And also, um, I'll probably send uh, a link to Harry's one as well. So uh, if, you, if you missed that one. And um, you'll definitely want to definitely want to get to, onto his one as well. So yeah, thanks again for everyone. Uh, thanks to Nice, fantastic session. And um, I know you aren't in full health. I know you've a bit of a chest infection, so uh, you you managed to to get through it. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say unscathed, but uh, there was a couple of uh, gaps there. But uh, yeah, you you did uh, really really well. So thanks very much. So um, hope everyone has a great rest of the day or evening. Thank you very much, and see you at the next one. Bye bye.